All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Bocella, Director of Client Success here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to the stock buying secret that beats 80% of the pros. Our presenter today is Sandy Chaken, co-founder of Chaken Analytics. Now, throughout this presentation, please submit your questions through the Zoom webinar Q&A window. You can access this in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Now, Michelle on the Greenblatt and I will be available to respond to your questions throughout the session. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who has registered. Now, before we get started with today's presentation, we do have a special guest with us, the founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics, Mark Chaken. Mark, take it away. Thank you, Joe, and welcome, everybody. Uh, when Sandy and I founded Chaken Analytics seven years ago, uh, she agreed to give up her marketing and PR consulting business and come work to coordinate our marketing and PR here at Chaken Analytics. She had never invested in a stock in her life. She had invested her 401k plan through mutual funds, had great success with Magellan and Peter Lynch and Bill Miller at uh, Leg Mason. But over the first couple of years that she was with Chaken Analytics, she started seeing the testimonials that we were getting and how easy it was to use Chaken Analytics to make profitable investment decisions. So she made a decision three and a half years ago to take a portion of her 401k plan and invest it using the Chaken methodology that she's going to teach you today. Uh, needless to say, she's been extremely successful and she speaks from experience. When I do a webinar, I'm talking about the theory as the creator of the Chaken Power Gauge rating and, and someone who's done this for 50 years. Sandy is showing you that a real person with no stock market experience can be profitable by using this very simple methodology that's based on the power gauge rating. I'm very proud of the success that she's had. Uh, we've taken a lot of vacations on the profits that she'd made, both with long-term investments and with swing trading. So it's with an enormous amount of pride that I introduce today's guest uh, webinar presenter and my wife, Sandy Chaikin. Well, Mark, thank you so much. That's really very nice of you to say all of that. Um, so let's um, let's get started right away. And I welcome you all to the uh, presentation. And as Mark said, I will be explaining to you uh, with examples that I actually, uh, stocks that I own or have owned. Um, so let's get started on, on the whole concept here of investing. So. Have you wondered, you know, what is the secret to becoming a more successful, confident investor? And that's obviously what we're going to be talking about today. But I first like to outline kind of the, the market condition, the problem. Where, where do we stand with challenges facing us as individual investors? Well, one thing we're sure of is that when we uh, run for the exits in panic um, because the market's dropping, that usually costs you money. And Dalbar Research out of Boston actually has quantified it to an average of 4% a year. So every time you hit that panic button and say, oh, I've got the stock market, the stock market's crashing, it's going down, I gotta get out of my stocks, uh, there's a cost associated with that. And um, you know, that's part of what we're gonna be going through today. How do you avoid that panic? Um, a little bit of background on the market in general. The S&P has grown an average of almost 10% over the last 20 years. So that's not bad. So if you put your uh, money into a S&P index fund, for instance, like at Vanguard, uh, you could expect an average of almost 10% a year, which is not bad. However, individual investors, uh, the research shows, have only averaged 2.5% over that same time frame. Uh, which is pretty paltry. And the reason is that um, we as individual best investors tend to buy on emotion, not fact. So how do you get beyond that? You know, how do you over overpower your emotions with, with fact uh, so that you're not making these emotional decisions? You know, again, that's part of the five-step process we're going to be reviewing very shortly. Your other... Uh, the other um, avenues of investment could be in actively managed uh, mutual funds. And I know that's where I uh, put my money before I started investing in stocks in 2012. 
However, uh, the research shows that for the last, uh, th this study was done on just the last uh, six months to a year, but actually for the last 13 or 14 years, 81% of actively managed mutual funds have underperformed the S&P 500. And take into account too, that when you invest in a mutual fund, you're paying a, a fee. There's usually a fee of about a percent and a half. So the underperformance on top of the fee, uh, no, wonder, no, no wonder average investors are only uh, investing at two and a half, or getting a gain of two and a half percent a year on average. So we can do a lot better than that. The solution that I have found is to invest in bullish rated stocks. Bullish rated by uh, the Chaikin Power Gauge, um, which is the, fact, the 20 factor model we're going to be going through today. But what I've been able to do is find a lot of these smaller stocks like what you see here that you probably haven't heard of, uh, nor had I before I, I found them. But this is where I, I've really made the largest impact in the last couple of years as the small and mid cap stocks have been outperforming the larger cap stocks. I have invested in larger cap stocks over the years, but recently uh, these are the ones that I've found um, that have really given me the, the highest performance. I tend to hold eight or 10 stocks at any given time. You know, some I hold for you know, six months a year or so. Uh, others, I'm more of a swing trader. I'm in and out in a week, three weeks, one month, three months. So it averages. It all depends on what the indicators are telling me. There's no time frame I have in mind. But my promise to you is that you're about to discover my secret to how I beat the pros and find winning stocks. You know, like these, I call them hidden winners. And how to do it quickly and easily because we're all time poor in today's economy. I mean, that is the new economy. Uh, we're all inundated with information and too much to do in too little time. So uh, quickly and easily, you know, it is, is the mantra. And this is also that we can celebrate. You know, as Mark said, we've taken some great vacations on the profits that I've made uh, from my stocks. We've been to um, Turkey, we've been to Vail, we've been to Rome, all this in the last couple of years. And this was all paid for by the profits that I made uh, in stocks. So why should you be listening to me over the next hour? Well, as Mark has said, I, I, beat, I have beaten the S&P 500 uh, for the, since I started investing in 2012 and since the research shows that uh, professional, excuse me, since the research shows that professional advisors have been underperforming the S&P, uh, then by association, I've been outperforming four out of five pros. Now, I just started investing in 2012. As Mark said, I started uh, mark, you know, helping with the marketing. But in order for me to be effective at marketing, I really need to understand the product or the service. So it was, it was critical, in my opinion, that I learn how to invest using Chaikin in Analytics to be effective at marketing. Um, and that was part of the catalyst for getting me to learn. And also, as Mark said, I was, I was seeing, you know, the examples of, of uh, what he was talking about. He was frequently on CNBC and talking about these particular stocks and lo and behold, you know, they'd all turn out to be winners or most of them did. So I was thinking, you know, there's a, there's a couple of reasons why I want to get in on this. One is to increase my own uh, fund as well as understand it better so that I am a better uh, marketer to, you as our audience. So I did start investing in larger uh, cap stocks like eBay, Yahoo, Southwest Air, and Skyworks. But since the last couple of years, I've kind of zeroed in on these hidden winners because the, these have been really where the higher profits have been. So last year, I found a little company called American Woodmark, uh, which happened to go up 98% last year, and Activision, which was up 94% last year. And I know Barron's has written about these stocks uh, last year as well, but um, I was in them well, well before um, Barron's was and talking about them on my, on my webinars. Now this year I'm in uh, Senta, which is up 87% so far, um, Quad Graphics up 212%. 
Let's see you to date. I mean, it's remarkable. And a stock called NACO, which is up 66%. Now, again, I've never heard of these stocks before I found them, but um, this is all, you know, very doable. And I do this on an average of 15 minutes a day. And the process that I'm going to be going through um, shows you exactly how I do this. So let's step back for a second to when I started investing in, in, uh, in stocks. And it was really through mutual funds, through my 401k plans. Um, when I was working for Elizabeth Arden and L'Oreal in the 70s and 80s in New York, and then the Franklin Mint, which is outside Philadelphia, they all had 401k plans that gave a choice of uh, mutual funds. So I was fortunate in that they offered the Magellan Fund by uh, Peter Lynch at, at uh, Fidelity. And over the course of, it was almost 20 years that he ran that, that fund was up 29% on average a year, which is pretty remarkable in itself. So I was very happy about that. Um, another one of the funds that I was in was in Bill Miller's um, Value Trust at Lake Mason, which also did very well. So I was doing pretty well with the uh, mutual funds that I was choosing, but, um, Nothing lasts forever, <laughs> and as they started to uh, not see those same remarkable uh, increases, and as my fund was growing, as I was putting more and more into my 401k plan, as my career developed, I felt it was prudent to engage a professional, you know, because the really the sound advice I'd always learned was that if you need professional help, you, you seek a professional, whether it's an accountant or a lawyer or a financial manager. So I, I asked around and a friend um, highly recommended a wealth manager to me whom I engaged. And the first thing he did was to sell uh, the mutual funds that I was in and put me in eight or 10 of his choice. And Mark says that's pretty typical for the way uh, wealth managers um, handle a new account. They, they like to put them into their own uh, vehicles. So that was okay for a while, but then um, guess what? Along came 2008. We all know what happened in 2008. As the market was tanking in September of 2008, I remember uh, very clearly calling him multiple times saying, you know, the, the market is clearly going down. Uh, wouldn't it make sense to sell these things now before uh, they go down any further? And the advice that I was given was, no, it's fine. Uh, just, you know, stay the course. They'll all come back, and it's better just to stay invested. Well, what I didn't realize at the time was that his advice to stay invested was based on the fact that that's the only way he gets paid, that if it went to money market, he doesn't get paid on cash. Um, I didn't know that, and I didn't have the confidence, frankly, to override his decision because I didn't feel I knew enough about uh, investing in the stock market. I always felt it was this kind of behind the curtain thing. And so I, sat there and invested in these funds and watched them go down uh, by 40%. So that was pretty devastating to me. And I looked like this basically <laughs> in, in uh, early 2009 when um, my account was 40% of what it had been. And this was pretty devastating for a number of reasons. One, is that I had worked really hard to build up that fund and I had foregone um, you know, expensive things and nice vacations and dinners out, etc., so that I could stash that money away and take most advantage of the profit sharing that my company would put in. And to, to watch that in, you know, basically overnight go down by 40%, it was, it was pretty, um, it was pretty devastating. So, that was really a turning point, though, in my, in my life in that I said, okay, um, this isn't going to happen again. You know, I've got to learn how to take control of my own financial future and at least be part of the conversation, you know, whereas what I had done was completely turn this over to a professional and say, okay, just 
you know, tell me what, tell me what's going on, you know, give me a monthly statement type of thing. So we do have a lot of wealth managers now who, who use Chaken. And what we encourage our subscribers to do as well is to, is to subscribe to Chaken so that they can also be part of the conversation and can monitor what the wealth manager is doing and have that conversation with him or her, uh, rather than just completely turn it over blindly as I did. So I've, I've recouped, you know, more than three times what that fund had been when I took it back in uh, 2009. And I started um, investing on my own, really, in uh, 2009 when I took it out of the wealth manager's uh, care and opened up a Vanguard fund and put it into an S&P 500 account until I could figure out what to do. And it was about at that time that Mark and I were getting together. So, um, you know, then along comes, you know, the, the concept to found uh, uh, Chaken Analytics in the wake of 2008-09 meltdown. And, um, and the rest is history, and here we are. So uh, there are many challenges I know that you all are feeling. Uh, some of you probably are feeling the same angst I did as I walked through that example of 2008 my lacking of confidence if you could at this moment just just go into that q a box um that joe i think could point out where it is if you're not sure and just let me know if you all felt that same um kind of lack of confidence and meltdown that i had in 2008 what challenges you're dealing with today you know what's on your mind what's holding you back what um, is keeping you from pulling that trigger to buy a stock or sell a stock? And if you could just type those um, replies in, that would really help me uh, get a great, great idea where you all are coming from. Okay, I can see uncertainty in the market, volatility, fear. Fear is always a big one. Uh, totally get you on that one. Lack of tools, lack of education, lack of confidence, timing. Yeah, that's always a big one. When to get in and out. Too much information. Information. Yes, I agree. I totally agree with you there. So, thank you, thank you all for sharing that with me. Um, I anticipated these replies because this is typically what I get each uh, week when I ask this question on these presentations, my presentations. So I know one of the biggest ones that you all recounted and I get over and over again is lack of education and tools. You know, and this of course accounts to the you know, lack of performance that investors can face in their investing. Lack of confidence, that's always a big one um, as it was today. Um, and obviously that was a big one with me in 2000, up to 2008, 2009, you know, when I lacked the confidence and I didn't really become a confident investor until 2012. So I get that. Um, fear of loss, um, that's always going to be the case. There always is going to be some loss in investing and I've learned to live with that. Uh, but we can minimize the loss. You know, it doesn't have to be these huge losses. We can minimize the loss if you know how. Trading on emotion, that's always, you know, a, a, a difficult challenge for us as human beings because we're human beings. <laughs> so we, we have emotions. So um, these are really the main themes that I'm going to be going through uh, this afternoon. Uh, but I break them down really into five steps and these are my five steps to beat the pros and you will you will see as i go through these five steps that they do overcome each of those challenges the fear of loss the lack of tools the lack of education um, the trading on emotion uh, and the timing you know not knowing when to sell so these are the things we're going to be going over right now and i'm going to be explaining them on what we call our financial freedom fast track, which is Chaken Analytics. It's on desktop and on iPad. 
And most of the examples that I'm using are on the iPad just because I feel they're a little bit uh, cleaner and simpler um, to use as an educational tool. But our tools um, are used by the pros. Um, many of the uh, pros at Fidelity, for instance, and these uh, Soros and Paulson hedge funds um, use Shaken Analytics, as well as we're quoted in the media quite frequently. Marcus Weekly uh, uh, interviewed uh, by uh, Evelyn Chung at CNBC. And you can see his um, findings, you know, his, his uh, quotes on the um, CNBC website. Um, but let's start with a proven methodology. And this addresses the lack of education and tools, because this really is the tool of choice, <laughs> um, in our opinion. This is a proven methodology that's based on a model, the chicken power gauge model. That, as you can see here, looks very simple because um, it's giving a very bullish rating, but it's not simplistic. Uh, what the power gauge does is it takes 20 factors, it puts them into an algorithm, and then it comes out with an overall rating um, based on the potential of that stock over the next three to six months. So think of it as a GPS for stocks. It tells you where that stock is headed in the next three to six months. And it overcomes the information overload, which I know some of you said on your challenge, on that challenge question I asked you too, is there's so much information out there now with the 24 seven news channels and all of the talking uh, financial shows uh, all day long and all night long. There's so much information. It's like, how do you know where to go for the information? Let it go, let alone what to ask. So as you can see by this uh, little chart um, with all the numbers on it, on the right here, you know, if this is what I were going to look at to tell me what's going on with the stock, uh, first of all, I wouldn't know what it says and I wouldn't know how to make any meaning out of it. But the power gauge rating really takes all of that, um, all of those numbers and equations puts them into its own algorithm and comes out, as you can see, with this very uh, bullish rating here. So it's compartmentalized into four basic components. And within each of these four components, there are five factors. Now, the way this was created was after this 2008 meltdown. Mark could see my distress. And he could also see um, that there were literally billions of dollars coming out of traditional brokerage firms and going into self-managed accounts, you know, like what I set out up at Vanguard. So we were now managing our own money, but he rightly said, you know, Sandy, you're, you're now managing your money, but you really don't have the tools or the education or the know-how to know how to do this. And he was absolutely right. Um, so he came out of retirement to, create tools for individuals like myself so that we could have the same edge as the pros because what Mark had done for some 45 years on Wall Street was create tools for the pros so that they could manage their portfolios um, and their clients' money um, more accurately and more profitably. So he knew what the pros looked at. He knew what they used every day when they go to evaluate a stock. And he zeroed in on those factors out of, there were 200 that he started with, but uh, when he came out of retirement, having sold his company to a division of Reuters, he started with 200 um, factors and whittled it down over the course of a year or so into these 20, because he felt, and the research showed, that these were the 20 most important factors that affect the price of the stock. So he molded this into what's now the power gauge, the Chaikin power gauge rating. And as you can see here, you can get a power gauge rating overall, or you can get it on any one of these major four components, financial metrics, which is the type of factors that a Warren Buffett uh, value investor would, would be zeroed in on looking at more carefully, 
earnings performance um, is a component that um, Jim Cramer, for instance, would look at. Um, the expert opinions, I really zero in on the expert opinions, in particular on these two highlighted in red factors, short interest, because the short sellers are known to be the smartest guys on Wall Street. And they, what they basically do is they take a, a sell position on a stock before they buy it. They sell it first and then they buy it back because they're anticipating that stock's going to be going down. So I want that rating to be bullish. You just have to remember that green is good and red is bad because it gets a little bit converted here. But the short interest, I don't want them shorting stocks that I'm looking at investing in. So I want that to be bullish. And I want insider activities also in, to be bullish because the insiders really know more about a company than pretty much anybody else because they're there. I mean, they're living it day to day and they're the ones that have access to the information and the future you know, reputation of that company and where it's headed. So I want insiders to be buying. Uh, this factor does measure insider buying activity which is much more important than insider selling activity, which is more readily avail available. But really, when you think about it, insiders can sell for a multiple of reasons. They could need cash. You know, they could be making a down payment on a home or buying a new car or paying a college tuition, and they may need to sell um, because they need the cash and it has no reflection on how they value the stock. So I like to look at the insider buying activity and then the third factor that I like to look at are price to sales ratio up here under financial metrics. And this is a ratio that compares a company's stock price to its revenue. So think of it as an indicator of the value placed on each dollar of a company's revenue. How much would you pay for a dollar of revenue? And if that's outlandish, it'll come up as a uh, neutral or uh, bearish factor. And then basically that stock is, is, you're paying too much for this stock for the dollar of revenue that you're ever gonna get back from it. So other than these three that I've highlighted here in red, I tend to really just look at the overall rating, you know, from very bearish to very bullish. And then I drill down on the four components and then into these three factors when I'm evaluating whether I'm going to be buying a stock or not. Now let's look at this in practice, okay? So this is Alliance Holdings. Uh, this is a stock I bought in August. And as you can see here, the power gauge still today is, uh, is very bullish. And expert opinions is still very bullish. And you can see here, I drill down on the five factors. Short interest, insider activity are still very bullish. And the same, is for under financials, the sales to um, price to sales ratio, that still is very bullish as well. So this stock you know, meets my criteria of having those three factors uh, very bullish, not only when I bought it back in August, but still today. But that's how, that's how easy it is to check that. Now models, okay, we are human beings and we know that we tend to make decisions in all aspects of our life based on emotion. But the advantage of having a model behind you when you're making financial decisions is that they beat human forecasters. You know, as James O'Shaughnessy, who's a very well-known investor and quantitative analyst says, he says, because models reliably and consistently apply the same criteria time after time, as opposed to human beings who are swayed by emotions and opinions. And I love this quote. I use, I've been using this for years because it's like, it so aptly says what we're trying to convey is that by depending on a model rather than what somebody on TV says or what I feel, you know, based on walking into a store and seeing what the traffic is in that particular store and thinking, oh, this is a busy store. I think I'll buy their stock. You know, this is this is objective research. It has no bias. It has no emotion. It has no opinion. It just is based on the facts. And John Carter, who's a new, recently a new partner of ours, a very well respected um, investor himself, 
and in the financial services industry. He has a company called Simpler Trading. He calls the shaken power gauge an objective awesome meter for stocks. He says there's a lot of hyped up tools out there, but a single tool that combines 20 technical and fundamental factors to anticipate a stock's profit potential got my attention. It's called the Chaikin Power Gauge. At first glance, I thought this looked like an objective meter for stocks, and I like that it includes fundamental and technical analysis for stock selection and timing. And we've seen um, by many of the financial services uh, available, they tend to either rely on fundamental analysis or technical analysis, but there aren't too many that combine the two. And in the model, the chicken power gauge rating model, it's 85% fundamental and 15% technical for those of you who are interested in the breakdown. Now to give you a little bit of more comfort level that the power gauge is, is reliable and something you can depend upon, uh, we have created indexes, three indexes for NASDAQ where we overlaid the power gauge rating and called out the stocks that were either neutral or bearish and created indexes just based on the bullish uh, stock, bullish rated stocks. Now in the two years that we've been tracking these indexes, they have all three continued to outperform their benchmarks by a wide margin. Now First Trust noticed these NASDAQ indexes and came to us and said, this power gauge looks pretty interesting. Can you create some unit investment trusts, which are like ETFs, they're like a basket of 20 stocks based on the power gauge rating um, as well. And so uh, we've done that, uh, launched those in December, and we now have almost $50 million under management with that because the First Trust wholesalers have gone out and uh, presented this to their clients who are the wealth managers who then invest their clients' uh, assets in it. So that should give you a little bit more uh, comfort level that the power gauge rating is, uh, is reliable. Does it work all the time? No, of course not. Uh, nothing works all the time. You know, as I said earlier, loss is, you know, there is going to always going to be some loss associated with investment. And if anyone tells you that their system is, is perfect, um, run the other way because there's, there's no such thing as 100% accuracy. But I'd say over 70% of the time, um, using the chicken power gauge rating in this methodology, it's, it's served me very well. So I'm just gonna pause here for a second because I wanna make sure you all understand that power gauge rating. It is the centerpiece of everything we're talking about over the next, um, of the balance of the hour, I should say. So I just wanna, if you'll just type into your, your chat box there, the Q&A window, um, if you're okay, if you're understanding what the concept of the power gauge rating is, that would be great. Okay, great. I will move on then. Okay, so step two is what I buy. Now, I've, I synthesized this into like criteria. These are the four basic criteria that goes into what we call a classic bull, which is what I buy. You want the power gauge rating to be bullish. You want the stock to be in a strong industry group, and you want the check and money flow to be strong. And you also want the relative performance to be strong. Now I'm gonna walk you through some examples and explain exactly uh, each of those criteria and how you would find them. Uh, and they're all on the uh, Jacob Analytics charts. But before I get to that, it's important to understand the way a stock price moves. Because when I first started investing, I mean, obviously I know stock prices move you know, every minute, every day. It's not like the fragrances. When I was with L'Oreal and Elizabeth Arden, for instance, I was marketing their uh, European designer fragrances. So if we're selling, say, an ounce of Chloe perfume in now, for instance, it could be, say, $100 an ounce. Well, it's gonna be $100 an ounce next week, next month, most likely the next six months as well. And that obviously isn't the case 
with the stock price. They're going to be moving all the time, but they don't move straight up or straight down. They do this like zigzagging action here. And this Dr. Wyckoff came up with this um, concept over 90 years ago, and it still is true today. So what he created then still is valid uh, as we speak. And this is basically the way he's charted a stock price. So a, a stock that's headed up, what we call a classic bull, is gonna go sideways, but then it's gonna pop up, it's gonna pull back, it's gonna pop up again, go sideways, and rinse and repeat. And so it's important to understand this because it took me a while to really get this. So I want, I want to make sure you get this faster than I do. Because once that stock, stock is breaking out, you don't want to be buying it up here. You can be certain that it is going to pull back. And if you're just patient and wait, you know, in, in three, four, five days, it most likely will pull back. And this is where you want to buy it, down here on this, what he calls a throwback. I mean, likewise, you want to be selling it when it's peaking up here. And so let's keep that in mind as we look at the stock prices on a stock like, like Santa. Okay, so this is a stock that I bought back here at this yellow arrow when the stock was 17. And this was in, I think it was May. Yeah, it was May. Um, but this, let me, let me walk you through these indicators and how to use, you know, these four main things that have to happen before I buy a stock. Power gauge rating is this solid ribbon along the bottom of the chart here. And as you can see, since March, it's pretty much been green or bullish. A little bit of sideways movement into neutral. This is relative price. It's called relative strength here, same thing. This is how this stock is performing relative to the S&P 500. And I use the S&P 500 as my benchmark, as do most investors. So we measure our success against how well the S&P is doing. This is telling you that this stock, Senta, has been outperforming the S&P since May. And what I say is that if you want average returns, just go with the S&P 500. And as the previous, you know, the research I showed earlier shows you, it will average almost 10% a year as it has over the last 20 years. But if you want to get outsized returns like I like to get, like Senta, which is up 87% this year, you know, then, then you want to go in and know how to find these stocks. And I'm going to show you, this is, this is what you look for when you're looking for a stock like, like this that's going to break out. Relative price, or strength rather, is um, this heat map here. It's still very strong today. Money flow is up here. This is these kind of mountainous uh, ranges here. This is a, a technical indicator that Mark created some 35 years ago when he was working on Wall Street. And what this does is this measures institutional money coming in and out of the stock. And Mark basically made his name on Wall Street with this one uh, indicator. Because the pros and the volumes of, of uh, stock that a pro trades in tends to move the prices because, because of supply and demand, you know, and this is the difference from selling perfume to selling a stock or buying a stock. You know, the perfume price is always going to be the same. The price of the stock is, is impacted by a lot of different things. And one of the, one of the major things that affects the stock price is supply and demand. So that when the pros are buying it, they're turning that, price up because there's fewer there's fewer inventory available which makes it more dear when pros like well you know on the other side of the coin are dumping a stock there's fewer buyers out there for it therefore the price gets lowered so it's really important to follow this shake and money flow indicator here and as you can see for Santa it's been very strong really since February. Um, but look at how things lined up. And this is what I like to see before I buy a stock. I want the power gauge rating to be strong as it is here in May, relative strength to be outperforming, and I want money flow to be strong. So I met all those, Senta met all those uh, three criteria for me. 
And really look what happens once those three line up. You tend to get this price acceleration of going up. And recalling that Wyckoff chart, you don't get it straight up. This, is, this orange line is a 200-day moving average. This is the real way it moves, you know, and if you recall from Wyckoff, it's going to go zigzagging across, it's going to jump up, pull back, zigzag across, jump up, pull back. So knowing that, you know, I know to wait for these pullbacks before I buy this stock, and I know to wait for it to pop up before I sell it. So walking you through my, my thinking, you know, this was a stock back on my watch list. Um, I got this buy signal in here. These We have six pairs of buy-sell signals, which are very helpful in, in um, triggering an opportune time to get in or out of a stock. Um, so I bought it shortly after that on this pullback here, and it spiked up um, when they reported uh, earnings here, and then it spiked up again up here. SunTrust came out with a buy recommendation on the stock and it popped up again. So I thought, wow, you know, I'm going to just take my profit and be happy. Um, and you can see that this, this correlates with that, you know, zigzagging up on that Wyckoff chart. And so I sold it here. But, you know, I really like this stock and everything continued to be green on this. So I kept it on my watch list. I actually bought it back here when it pulled back and I got this this buy signal this money flow buy signal here so this signal here more recently I think this was August um, gave me the opportunity to get back into the stock because the money flow was still strong everything else was still strong and then correlating those zigzag movements um, the timing, uh, you could use this overbought, oversold to really help you with the timing. So what I like to do is sell a stock when it's peaking up, like it is here, for instance. And if I'm going to buy a stock, I want to buy it when it's underneath this uh, dotted line here under the 30. So you can see here, when it triggered this money flow buy, it didn't necessarily take into account whether this stock was zigging up or zigging down, but this does for me. So I say, okay, here's the triangle. It's telling me it's a good time. It's on a pullback because it's, it's pulled back. And it does correlate you know, with this, what we call oversold position, which is a great opportunity to get into a stock. And likewise, you want to sell it when it's, peaking up as it was doing here, you know, when I sold this uh, back in June. So another thing I want to point out on this is you can see that this stock has kind of gone down since, what is that, late August, since I bought it really. It's kind of gone down in price, but uh, the market really has gone down in price. You know, in the last month, the S&P has been down 1%. But knowing that everything is green in here, I'm like totally confident sticking with this stock because this is all telling me that this stock has this really strong potential to outperform the market over the next three to six months. So this gives me a total sense of, of confidence and conviction to stick with this stock and um, you know, not sell it. If I'd seen this going down and didn't have what I'm looking at, I might think, oh gosh, this stock is tanking, you know, I better get out of it now before it drops even further, you know, and then I'd miss this nice move up. Uh, this gives me the confidence and the conviction to stick with it, not trade on emotion. Okay, so how do I find stocks like Senta? Well, we've created uh, what I think is really the biggest the biggest time saver um, I've found in a screener. We've created this screener and incorporated it into our uh, desktop. It's soon going to be part of the iPad uh, workstation as well. Um, but what you can do is plug in into this screener the, the factors and criteria that meet your standards. Now, for me, 
Um, I've told you I want a stock to be bullish before I buy it. I prefer it to be very bullish, but bullish is okay. So what I can do is the plug this in um, as part of my criteria. I'm saying only show me only the bullish stocks. I told you that there were those three factors that were part of the power gauge rating that I feel particularly uh, are important. And I plugged those in. I want those all to be strong. I want them to be bullish. So I've gone from, and I'll explain the industries later, but I've gone from a universe now of 422 stocks down to 74. And then I want the money flow to be strong and the relative strength to be strong. Uh, so I've, I've narrowed the field a little bit further, 45 and 34. And then in today's market, I'm, I'm adding another layer of a market cap, small and mid cap, because the small and mid caps have been outperforming the large caps. So literally in seconds, I've gone from a universe of 422 stocks down to 20. And I know that these are all meeting my criteria. So let's see the screener in action because uh, I run this just about every week. I can save this criteria and run it on my, um, on my um, workstation by just hitting, you know, go, because um, it saves all of these criteria for me. In this, in this um, example here, I've also under Stock Universe put in strong industries, and that's, that's one of our criteria that I'm going to be getting to. It's actually the next criteria. So we're kind of overlapping them here, but strong stocks in strong industry groups tend to outperform um, even the strongest stocks in weakest industry groups. So you wanna go with strong stocks and strong industry groups, and that's part of the um, search field here as well. So that helps narrow the universe. So back in June, I ran this um, screener right before a presentation, and NACO and Quad uh, came up on it. I'm going to zero, there are other stocks in here that I bought as well, but I'm going to zero in on those two just to uh, use them as examples. But this is how I find them. And then I can save this list in my workstation and flip through each of their charts. Um, now, I'll bring in Warren Buffett here. <laughs> uh, obviously, everyone knows um, who's on this presentation, everyone knows who Warren Buffett is, but he says, Investors should be fearful when others are greedy and greedy only when others are fearful. And he's kind of using reverse psychology here. So what he means is be fearful, meaning sell, when others are greedy, when others are buying. And greedy, meaning um, buy, only when others are fearful. So he's kind of going against the tide. But you'll see how I use that um, in my own methodology um, and how I used it here when I bought NACO. So this popped up on my radar screen in June from that screener. So I already knew it covered the three factors that I felt were important, it had a bullish power gauge rating, I knew it was in a strong industry group because that was my criteria as well. Um, and so I put it on, um, on, a, on a list. Now this stock I had happened to already own because I had bought it back here in May. It had been on an earlier screener list. So I already had owned this stock. But you'll see what happened during that um, June 24th Brexit vote in here the stock really dipped, as did most. It looks like it dipped about 7%, which is about you know what the S&P dipped in those couple of days that followed that Brexit vote. If you'll remember on June 24th, uh, Britain voted to leave the European Union and nobody expected that. And the market hates uncertainty. So what the market did was sell off. And because institutions and individuals um, but in particular institutions were selling, the prices all dropped. And you can see that right here. I use that as an opportunity though, as you'll see in, in, in the quad example, and a number of other stocks too. I bought on that pullback right here. This stock I happen to already own. 
But then you can see what happened here is that it did um, really pop up and spike up beyond this channel line here. These white bands here are basically what I consider the channel. I'm a sailor, so I need to stay in the channel when I'm navigating. Otherwise, I might run aground. So think of it in that same way here, that you want to stay within these like upper and lower bands. Uh, because if it goes up and outside, it could be a, a good opportunity to, to take your profit. Uh, likewise, if the stock drops below this band, it could be a time to say it's, it's not going in the right direction. It might be a good time to get out. Um, but I sold this up on this spike because it, it popped way above its um, upper band. I took the profit. But then, you know, like Scent, I really like this stock. So I waited for it to pull back because I know from that white call zigzagging pattern that it will pull back, and it did. And it also tri triggered this um, oversold buy here uh, a week or so later which you can see correlates with this uh, dipping down below this um, 30 line on the overbought, oversold. But everything else was positive. Money flow was good, strong relative strength, strong power gauge, you know, since January, really, a very strong run. So I bought it back here, you know, at 65, where I had sold it up here at 68. And I'm still holding uh, the stock today. So, I mean, this is, a, this is still a great stock idea. If you're keeping um, a list of some ideas for your own portfolio, I certainly would put this down. Uh, this is still a very strong stock in a strong industry group. The three factors that I like are still very bullish or bullish. I would wait for this to pull back. I mean, as you can see here, it's digging up. You don't want to be going, you want to be buying when it's up here. You want to wait for it to pull back. So wait for this, and it's usually three to five days, we'll pull back. Um, and that would give you a better opportunity to get into the stock. Um, so is this making sense? Are you guys getting this? I mean, can you see yourself kind of coming to those same conclusions as you look at these charts? You know, if you'll just chat that in for me, and give me a sense of whether you're, whether I'm being clear or not. Okay, getting some yeses, that's great. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, so keep that in mind again, because let's use that same methodology on this example of quad graphics. Uh, this stock's had an enormous run, as you can see here, from back in January, it's up over 200% this year. Um, so again, this was on that June 22nd um, screener. And it had been on the screener that I had the week before. So I had this on a watch list. I keep one list of stocks I own, which are typically eight to 10. And then I keep another list, which I call my watch list, which are stocks that I'm interested in. Um, may not be the right time or may not have the funds right now to buy them, but I keep them on a list where I can monitor them. And those are basically the two lists that I go through every day, just scroll through the charts and I can tell very quickly by looking at these charts whether there's something I need to be concerned about or take action with. Uh, and that's really, you know, as simple as it needs to be. That's my 15 minute uh, methodology. I do that in the morning and then I do that again after the close. Um, and that allows me to really keep keep ample tabs on my stocks and take action if need be. So let's look at this um, classic bull. Power gauge was um, solid since January. Relative strength was solid since mid-February. And money flow uh, was great since February as well. And you can see what happens when these three things line up. You know, the price tends to take off. So you, this is clearly the pattern you want to look for. You can see what happens as money flow starts to waver here. The stock tends to go sideways, even when other things are strong. And I found that uh, typically happens um, time and time again. 
So that's how important this money flow indicator is and, and what an impact it does have on a stock's price. But again, you know, like Santa and like NACO, in this, you know, pullback zone in here the last month or so, um, I have no problem staying with this stock. And this stock actually, you know, is pulled back by like 6% from here to here over the course of, was in about six weeks. And if I didn't look at this chart, I would have been thinking, oh my God, this stock's going down. It's already down 6%. Maybe I should sell it. And that would have been a big mistake. But seeing all this green here, you know, gives me the confidence and the conviction to stay with it. And even this small amount of money flow is nothing to be concerned about. You know, bigger chunks like this are where I tend to notice, particularly if there is something else that's negative, like a relative strength and a neutral power gauge rating. That's not the recipe for success. Um, but once all this turns green, it's very natural for a stock to have a little bit of money coming out of it. Um, and again, this gives me the conviction to stay with this stock. So are you getting this? I mean, does this make sense? Because this is really the secret right here is learning how to read these charts so that you can take advantage of buying and selling these stocks, you know, at the opportune time, like, like I'm showing you here. So this yellow, uh, this yellow arrow here um, shows where I bought it on this pullback June 24th on that Brexit vote. This stock you can see didn't pull back as much as others, but it still did pull back. And at the same time, I got a, a momentum breakout signal. So that, you know, that was obviously the, um, kind of the icing on the cake that says, hey, you know, this is a great time to take advantage of getting in on this stock. And you can see it was oversold. It was dipping down in here. So everything lined up for me uh, perfectly for me to buy it on this, you know, 5% dip at 21. This is still a good, a good stock idea. Uh, those of you keeping a list, the price to sales and the short interest are still bullish. However, the insiders have gotten to be very, uh, very bearish right now. And, I'm thinking about this um, because the stock has had such a huge run from the beginning of the year when it was like eight or 10. This is just my thinking. My thinking is that the, the insiders have already bought what they're going to buy and they're thinking the price is oversold now. And if they were in last year at this stock at, you know, eight, ten dollars they may not want to be buying it at 27 <laughs> uh, But when it pulls back, you don't want to buy it because it's zigging up. You want to make for it to zigzag back down again, remember. So keep an eye on this. And when this oversold indicator comes down below that 30, assuming everything else is still strong, you know, that's a, that's a, could be a likely candidate to get in on that stock. So in addition to making some nice profits, Having this type of, you know, knowing these types of secrets of how to make good investment can also give you a better night's sleep, as it has done for Jim. Jim said, after getting hammered in the August uh, 2015 correction, I decided to take advantage of what Chaikin really offers, that is a better night's sleep and some impressive returns. So rather than swinging for the fences and striking out, he's learned to do what the system tells him to do. And he thanks the team for giving my confidence and a good night's sleep. And I like this because I always go back to confidence because if, we, if you don't have confidence in what you're doing, you're likely not to make a decision at all. Or if you do make a decision, it's likely to be a poor decision. So confidence is key. So let's quickly go through industry groups. Um, why is that important? Well, the research shows that over 50% you know, of a price move can be attributed to the industry group the stock is in. And the average stock in a strong industry will likely outperform even the strongest stock in a week. So we say put the, put the wind at your back. If you're gonna buy something, go with you know, everything in your favor. So go with a strong industry group, or at least one of the strongest. Now, the um, Zach's research has uh, identified 64 industry groups, and, and every um, 
stock goes into one of those industry groups. We've then taken that and overlaid the power gauge rating so that we rank the industry groups by the proportion of strong stocks in that group. So as you can see um, now, I run this list in our, in our uh, platform. Coal is the top industry group, consumer electronics, investment funds, oil, banks, major, et cetera, et cetera. So the screener automatically will only uh, screen you, screen for the top 20% if you put that, uh, you, that in under your universe. So that's what, I, that's what I do. On my screener, you know, in addition to these things that we've gone through in here, I always put in, only give me stocks that are in the strongest industry groups, and it'll only give you the top 20%. And as you can see here, when I recently ran the screener um, a couple of weeks ago, it went from a universe of 5,000 stocks, which are the stocks that we rank, and immediately gave me 856. And then when I put in my other parameters in seconds, literally, I get down to 20. So you take a universe of 5,000 and literally in 30 seconds, you can identify 20 stocks that fit your criteria that are good candidates. You know, then I put them into a list and scroll through them. But that's, you know, that's really how simple it is. Now let's zero in on, um, Alliance Holdings, because this, as you saw, was on that screener in September. Um, it's in the strongest industry group, which is coal. Um, and I bought this stock um, back here at this yellow arrow. Now, this screen is from the, uh, the desktop platform. And I did that because we have an overlay in the, um, a couple things in the, in the, um, desktop platform that aren't available yet on the iPad. They will be soon. But one is this earnings overlay. So you can overlay, you can click this on, and it'll show you, as it's done here, when this, when this company reported earnings. And the green is they um, beat estimates. The red is they disappointed. And this can be really helpful. I'm giving a webinar on just how to take advantage of earnings next Thursday. Uh, but this can be really helpful in um, timing because there tends to be a lot of volatility around earnings. So I put this uh, I put this stock um, on my on my watch list. I actually had been on a screener back in in June, that June twenty second screener I originally showed you had this on, and again it was on it um, September um, September twenty second. But I bought this. Um, a little bit after this momentum buy signal here, where the stock had spiked up on an earnings report. Well, you certainly don't want to buy it when it's up here. You want to wait for it to pull back, which is what I did, and then I bought it when it had pulled back down here. And then I just sold this stock today because yesterday it went up uh, over 2.5%. And today, as you can see here, it was up almost 4%. So I thought, and it went above that uh, volatility band, that channel market right there. So I thought, wow, this is, you know, this is a nice spike. It's a two-day spike of almost 6 over 6%. So I think I'm just going to take my profit and, uh, and be happy. And as you can see, um, it was overbought, zigging up. So I was selling it on a, um, on a spike instead of a pullback, which is great. Uh, and money flow has just started to turn negative. So I felt that probably means this stock's gonna go sideways for a while. So I figured I'll just take my uh, profit of 14% in two months and, um, and be happy, which is um, exactly what I did. I think this is still a great stock idea, AHGP. I would still put this on your watch list. Wait for money flow to turn negative before you do any uh, positive before you do anything, and wait for this to um, get into the oversold uh, category. So I see we're up to our time already. I'm going to need another 10 or 15 minutes to 
get through this material. So thank you all for staying, staying on. Um, time. I mentioned earlier that we're all time poor. Uh, we get a lot of testimonials from our subscribers, and Cheryl has uh, referenced, you know, there's not enough time in my day to do the work Jacob puts before me in minutes. I am wowed, and I really equate that um, as well to the screener. The screener is an enormous time saver. It can help, uh, certainly helps me zero in very quickly on stocks that I'm interested in. All right, so let's move on. Um, to what to avoid because it's just as important to know what to avoid um, and when to sell as it is you know when to buy it's also it, it can be really more difficult to know when to get out of a stock i think it's more difficult to know when to get out than when to get in but again it's the classic bear pattern which is the reverse of the classic bull uh, let's look at a th few examples uh, first, though, it's the same zigzagging action, but it drops down, you know, pops up a little bit, drops down again. So it's just the reverse. Um, and when you see this happening, you know, this zigzagging across, popping down, not getting back up very high and dropping down again, you know, that's a really good uh, time to say it's probably the time to get out of this stock. So... Chipotle, uh, boy, they've had their problems this year with the, the food poisoning and the closing stores and stuff like that. So this has not been a pretty picture, but you can see here how easy it is to read that this is not a stock you want to be in, right? I mean, because you see so much red here and red sell signals, you would not want to buy this stock uh, to hold, even though you without this type of um, research in front of you, you might say, oh, it's, but it's gone from 400, it's now up to 427. You know, it might be on a, on a uh, trajectory back up again. I better get in on it now before it goes up any more, any, any more so. Uh, would any of you be, be romanced into thinking that way, um, looking at, at this stock chart though? I doubt it. You'll just type in, um, you know, yes, yes would buy or no would not. Um, I can, I'll, then I can see if you're, you are understanding this. So I am getting some no's. Not, not the right time to buy this, right? Unless you're trading options, and then you could trade it, um, a put option on it. And that's where these sell signals can be really helpful. And you can see there's a sell signal uh, that was just uh, triggered today saying this, this stock is um, for bought, time to sell. Uh, Starbucks, same pattern, all red, sell signals. Lionsgate, and this is a stock I made a lot of money on in 2014, but I'm sure glad I don't own it today. And I, uh, I broke down the power gauge rating so you could see just about all, each, each of those four components are either neutral or bearish as well. It's down 34% this year. This is why, you know, buy and hold doesn't really work anymore. Because I, I cashed out of this stock, I was in the 30s, I think, a couple of years ago, and made a really handsome profit on it. And if I had hold it, I would have evaporated all that profit and, and more. And then you can see these sell signals would help you out along the way. I can only overlay one of the six pairs at any given time. So there could be additional like relative strength sell signals that trigger in between here as well. But um, I can only show you one at a time on a chart. So another um, quick testimonial. This is Harry um, who's been trading in options and uh, Joe, when you subscribe, will get you into his sessions um, actually the next day. And it will familiarize you with the platform and how to use it, how to set up your list. And he also does specific um, work, work, work um, not workstations, but he does specific webinars on trading options with Chaken because we have an options overlay that really helps. So it helped Harry here. In two weeks, he made over $17,000.
uh, on trading options with, uh, with Jacob. So I've been pointing out these um, buy-sell signals as we've gone along. And just to reiterate, we do have these six pairs. And when they trigger, it's a, it's a good indication of what to, you know, it's a good time to look at. It's not a hard and fast rule. you got to do it now because they may not take into account other situations that are going on with that stock. They're just zeroing in on their specific criteria. But they've been really directional um, and a big help to me, certainly, on giving me, um, you know, timing when to buy and sell. How do you know when they trigger? Well, we have an overlay. Uh, this little bell is this overlay on your list, any list you want. Your watch list, the stocks your own list, the S&P 500, top industry group, for instance. You could do an alert uh, on coal, for instance, see what's triggered uh, in the coal stocks, number one industry group right now. Um, I overlaid this for you on my watch list. So you can see that today it triggered a relative strength buy on Urban. It also tells me other things that have changed that can affect the price, like power gauge alerts. So these, for instance, have gone from neutral to um, bullish. Estimate revisions um, tells me if an analyst has updated an estimate revision. And here you can see by the green arrow that it's a positive one. And again, more power gauge alerts uh, rating has turned from neutral to bullish. So these are really good things to know about, um, particularly in your portfolio or stocks that you're watching to buy. Because it could say, hey, you know, you, want, you might want to consider buying this stock today you know, or selling. So here's the chart for Urban Outfitter, which shows you the relative strength buy on this. Um, as you can see, it's a strong relative strength. I wouldn't buy it right now because the money flow isn't strong. And I like everything to be perfect before I'm going to buy. So I would wait for this money flow to be strong. It's telling you this stock has strong relative strength uh, relative to the S&P 500. Uh, another good stock idea to put on your list if, um, if you're looking for some ideas. All right, I'm putting this section in here of when I sell uh, because I know investors' biggest challenge is to know when to sell. I like to shop, so it's easy to buy, but it's harder to know when to give that up. But these um, guidelines have really helped me. So there's two situations, really. One, when I'm taking profit or when a stock is breaking down. Now, let's break it down. So taking profit, I take the profit when that price hits that upper volatility band, as I showed you earlier, as it did on NACO when I sold it. Um, or the price is overbought. You know, it's digging up. It has that nice peak to it. Or it spikes after a strong earnings report. And let's look at a few more examples. Um, I showed you that one I did today, the Alliance, AHGP, you know, Alliance Holdings that I sold today on the spike. Um, this is the similar situation, Nucor. I bought this back after that, you know, that Brexit um, drop, June 24th, um, and it actually triggered an, an oversold buy, uh, oversold buy signal a few days after I bought it. But you can see this drop here from Brexit. So I was greedy in here. I bought this stock when it was down here, when everything else was lining up. A little bit of money flow was out, but a little that, that was true across the board, basically, because all of the institutions were selling. Uh, but I felt this stock had strong potential because of everything else I saw. And of course, it was dipping down here, which is why it triggered this oversold buy signal here to correlate. But then look what happened in a matter of weeks. I mean, this just ratcheted way up above that outside channel line. So I sold it up here. I took a nice uh, profit selling it at 53. So in like a month's time, I had a nice 10% uh, profit. Uh, you can see what's happened now. Once this power gauge turned neutral, uh, relative strength and money flow kind of fell in behind it and look at the price down 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 now it came up a little bit 
but today it triggered a relative strength break, breakdown. It says this stock is breaking down. So am I glad I got out? You bet. <laughs> really glad I got out up here at 50, it's really more like 56, um, you know, than what it is today at 48. And that's a really nice guideline to remember. You know, take your profit when it goes above this volatility line. Uh, be happy, take the profit and get out. Now, earnings, you know, taking profit on an earnings spike is another really uh, great way to make some uh, quick profits. This is a screenshot from the desktop version um, of Citrix. And this is a stock that I, and I, I took the desktop because it's based on earnings, obviously. And so using desktop, I can overlay the earnings and you can see uh, when they reported. So I knew from looking back that when they reported, they spiked up at least the last two sessions. So I bought this stock. Uh, it had been on my watch list. I bought the stock before they reported earnings in July, or no, I'm sorry, in April of last year. Um, and then of course, everything was green and it did spike up. Um, I sold half of it up here. I kept the other half. And on the second earnings report, it spiked up again and then I sold the balance. So I basically got out twice. I got out once up here with half and up here with the other half. Uh, but that's how you can take advantage of earnings. And with this new earnings overlay, you now know whether the analysts are uh, bullish on a stock or not. And that can really have a strong sway over evaluating how it's going to perform at, at this earnings uh, uh, date because they tend to repeat themselves if they're if a stock is exceeding analyst expectation consistently You know for the last year there's a pretty good likelihood that they might do the same on the upcoming one obviously nothing is um, Nothing is is for sure and sometimes it surprises you um, but for the most part you know, it can be um, it can be a nice spike to take advantage of, and this is what Mark has done. You know, he's had a ninety percent average return in his first six earnings trades using options play. You know, that's the overlay that I haven't had a chance, obviously, to review with you, but Joe will, and the earnings features. You know, all very simple trades make the make the process. Jake, it makes the process fast and efficient. So instead of getting bogged down in due diligence, I was trading. And that's what we want to do. And zero in on what we need to know, make your decision, get in and out, and move on. All right, a breakdown. When a stock is breaking down, you certainly want to know what, what the warning signals are so that you have an opportunity to get out before it goes further. The criteria I use is when the power gauge turns neutral and another indicator turns negative, like relative strength or money flow. You know, then that combo is a good call out to me, alert to me to say, hey, this stock is, is probably breaking down. It's probably a good time to get out. Certainly when you get a sell signal. And then when that price drops below the orange line, which is that 200 day moving average line, uh, or, that, or that channel line, that's also a time to say, hey, this is kind of going under its norm. Uh, this stock is heading in the wrong direction. And then you could keep a, um, like a, I kind of can keep a mental note because I only own eight or 10 at, at one time, but if the price drops below 10 or 15%, you know, that also is a time to say, hey, just, you know, take the smaller loss now before it gets any more so. So again, let's look at the, um, the workstation from the desktop version on Huntington Ingalls. Um, this was a great stock back in, really since last November. I mean, look, everything's green, right? So it looked pretty good. 
Uh, it looked very good, as a matter of fact. And I bought this stock back in June, right in here, with this money flow buy signal. So this was on my watch list. I bought this June 21st. Um, here came that Brexit vote. You can see it dropped just a little bit for that and then popped back up again. Um, I could have sold it here at this upper volatility band, but I didn't. But then when it popped up again, it reported earnings and it spiked up. And I felt trouble was on the way because the power gauge had turned neutral and money flow had turned negative. And remember on the previous slide, I said when the power gauge turns neutral and another indicator like money flow or relative strength turns negative, then I consider selling. So I had everything um, in my favor to sell. You know, they, they did report uh, stronger than expected earnings and it spiked up, up to that upper band uh, and it looked like it was breaking down, and that's exactly what happened. So I sold it up here at 172. Uh, the stock is now at, what is this, 154. Um, and there's been a recent sell signal. So you can see what's happened. It's now power gauge actually has turned uh, bearish. And you can see once it turns bearish and relative strength turns uh, negative, um, you know, then you really get the, the drop in the price. So you clearly want to be out before you get to this point. And using those simple guidelines, um, again, objective. There's no emotion about it. There's no hemming or hawing or thinking. I don't have to think. I just have to follow the rules. So uh, following the rules you know, has really um, allowed me to profit. And those are the secrets <laughs> that I've shared with you now so that you can do the same thing. So just to recap, you know, the five steps to beat the pros is to use a methodology, reliable methodology you trust, which for us is the Jacob Power Gauge rating. Know what to buy, that's the classic bull. Buy strong stocks in strong industry groups. All you have to do there is just put that criteria into your screener and it'll do the work for you. Know what to avoid, that's avoiding that classic bear. And knowing when to buy and sell, which is uh, with the help of the signals and also those criteria that I uh, reviewed with you of what I use. But the important thing here that I always like to stress is that, is that you want to take control. I mean, even if you're using wealth managers, that's great, but you also want to be part of that conversation and know what that wealth manager is thinking and doing uh, before they do it. Because even, even the pros get it wrong. I mean, Jim Cramer was touting this um, EXXI stock for months. Uh, going back in here, you can see this was all the time he was saying it's a great stock to buy. And you can see by looking at this chart with all this red, um, Jacob's subscribers were not, were not going for the bait. And it actually turned out they filed for bankruptcy. So you, you can't depend on other people to do the research um, for you. You know, you really need to have the system in place so that you can rely on it and do it yourself. And Peter, who is a financial manager and a recent subscriber to Chaken, says it's Sandy's figured out how to make taken even easier for regular investors to find the really good stuff and concentrate on buying and selling only them. And that's exactly what I've just reviewed with you here and shared with you are my secrets of how I do that. And I've also decided to get rid of other services I've been using for years because this one makes a whole lot more sense. And it really has everything you need to know on it. We've just added news. Um, so that I used to, you know, one of my other secrets was I would go to CNBC, um, real time app or seeking alpha app to get news stories about the stocks that I own. But now just this week we've added them so that they are all listed on the stock screen of the, uh, the desktop versions. So now I don't even have to do that. 
Um, but I made the promise earlier on um, that you would discover my secret of how I beat the pros and find winning stocks quickly and easily. And these are stocks that, you know, as, as you've seen, these are definitely not household names. They're not Procter and Gamble and Colgate and uh, Delta Airlines. I mean, these are, you know, these little hidden winners that can really be incredibly profitable. So start thinking about how you want to spend your profits, you know, how you want to take some nice vacations like we have, um, or obviously invest in your retirement, but you also want to celebrate along the way too. So I always say if you have a goal in mind, it makes it that much more um, meaningful, you know, to work towards. So all of this that I've been um, demonstrating has been on uh, Chaikin Analytics, either the desktop or the uh, iPad version. We've recently added the screener, the whole options overlay, and the earnings features. And there's so much more to it than what I was able to go through today. But you've got to start with the basics and just focus on what I was showing you today and then add the layers. The, the subscription uh, to an annual subscription is $1,950 a year uh, for today's webinar registrants. Uh, we're offering that to you for $200 off, $1,750 a year. And that's valid for the next 72 hours until uh, midnight Sunday. Uh, but hold on, I'm going to make this even uh, more attractive to you if you'll just stay with me for a second. The software comes bundled with, you know, the options overlay. I highlight here Mark's uh, weekly market insights, which we call done for you research. It's, it puts out a market commentary every Sunday night. That's really extraordinary in that it recaps what's going on in the market, evaluates what what to expect in the week to come. Uh, and gives very specific uh, stock ideas for buy sell candidates, but it's really um, it's really valuable insights. That's why we call it market insights. And in addition to that, I highlight the coaching calls, which are the calls that um, Joe and his team with Michelle and Josh will get you started on. So when you subscribe as early as tonight. Tomorrow, you will be in one of these coaching calls with a small group where one of our customer success uh, team members will walk you through exactly how to set up your list, you know, how to screen for stocks, how to screen for those top industry groups, um, etc. And then if you need more coaching, uh, you, could, you can attend unlimited uh, small group coaching classes, obviously, but if you want a one-on-one -on -one because you have a particular methodology that you want to understand better how to integrate Shaken with, you can set up a one-to-one -one call with one of our customer success managers. So that's incredibly valuable because our success rests in your success. You know, we want you to be successful because obviously um, when you're successful, you'll be happy and you'll stay a subscriber and you'll tell your friends. <laughs> and that works well for you and it works well for us. So. Um, you know, our success is measured by your success. We also have uh, bi-weekly what we call open forums, which are uh, small webinars for subscribers only. And that gives you the opportunity to ask questions about the platform or for Joe or his teammates to explain to you what's new, what's coming, what's coming down the pike, how to use a particular signal or whatever. All of this comes in, in addition to the screener that we've recently added, those earnings alerts, which is that overlay. And in addition to Mark's weekly insights, you're going to get a daily insights from our chief investment strategist with very specific buy-sell ideas each day. And we've also just added this intraday charts. So you can um, quickly, you know, quickly as with one click, see what a stock is doing price-wise during the day. So I used to jump over to like Yahoo Finance to see what a stock was doing in a day that I was considering saying buying or selling it. But now I don't have to do that. It's all, it's all right there. 
So John Molden, who is um, another financial expert and a recent partner of ours, says that his analysts are enthusiastic users of Chaikin and use it to analyze the trades and recommendations of our writing team, giving them feedback and insights into their own ideas. And John has a, a mailing list of over a million subscribers that he goes out to. Uh, he says, Mark's system has been integrated into our routine due diligence process for vetting and evaluating potential investments. So we're very proud of this uh, testimony from John because he's, he's very well respected in the industry group and the fact that he is using Chaikin uh, should give you some comfort that this is a reliable system. So I told you I was going to sweeten the pot uh, for those of you who take action tonight. When you subscribe by midnight tonight, we're going to add in what we call a fast action bonus. is three live half hour uh, sessions with Mark on earnings. You heard me uh, briefly say how I've taken advantage of the volatility around earnings. And since we're going into earnings season right now, uh, Mark will give you three sessions uh, for free, uh, bundled into your uh, annual subscription starting next week. And in addition to that, I'm gonna make it even easier for you to say yes, we'll take an additional $100 off. Uh, but that's only uh, for when you subscribe by midnight tonight. So. Um, $1,650 for the annual subscription plus those three earning sessions with Mark um, when you subscribe by midnight tonight. So with that, um, boy, I did run over. I apologize, but I thank you for staying with me. Joe, I'm going to turn it back to you um, to close out the session, but I do thank everyone for um, staying with, with me and, and staying on the presentation and uh, good luck with your trading and investing. Awesome. So uh, again, thank you very much, Sandy, for your time and for the presentation here. Um, just to show you just how easy it is to uh, take advantage of Sandy's offer here, you can see the access page that I just pulled up uh, where you can enter your order for Chaken Analytics. Again, a full year to Chaken Analytics, $300 off for attending today's webinar, plus access to the series of uh, three webinars with Mark Chaken himself going over a lot of earnings scenarios and how you can manage during earnings season, which of course starts uh, within the next couple of days. So when you do subscribe today, please make sure to take advantage of this offer. Of course, tomorrow will be our last onboard session of the week. This is a great opportunity to join a session uh, with our a client success team to make sure that you know the full ropes, the ins and outs of where you can access the best stocks, and of course, everything else in terms of creating a list within Chaken Analytics. So uh, make sure to take advantage of this. We will see you tomorrow on our session. Uh, keep an eye out for a recording of today's presentation, and we'll be sending this out tomorrow morning as well. So on behalf of everybody here, have a great evening, and we will see you tomorrow.